My name is Taylor Scar. I'm the Provincial Forest Entomologist with the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources. Emerald ash borer is an invasive alien species. It's alien in the sense that it is not native to this part of North America. In fact, it's not native to North America at all. It's also invasive. The invasiveness is, is measured on things like the economic impact, uh, environmental impact, ecological impact, and social impacts. The beetles are called emerald ash borer because of the green color that they have. It's an iridescent metallic green. The beetles are about 7 to 15 millimeters in length and they are about to three and a half millimeters across. The larvae are white or creamy colored. They're uh, very long and slender with bell-shaped abdomens and they create serpentine or S-shaped tunnels underneath the bark as they feed. They can be up to uh, 26 to 32 millimeters in length. The beetle lays eggs onto the trunk of the tree and the eggs hatch and the larvae or grubs crawl underneath and they feed just underneath the bark. That cuts off the flow of food that normally travels down to the roots and feeds the roots and also the water that travels up from the roots to the leaves. That causes the roots to die which cuts off the water supply to the top of the tree and then the top of the tree starts to die and eventually the whole tree dies. E Emerald ash borer only attacks ash trees and you can tell an ash tree from other trees because it's one of the few species in Canada that has an opposite arrangement to its twigs and to its leaves. In other words, where one leaf comes out, there's another leaf comes out opposite on the twig, and the buds do the same. They have diamond-shaped patterns to the bark. Both the green and white ash have that. Uh, if it's a black ash, it won't be such a diamond shape, but it'll be very corky. When you're looking for emerald ash borer, it's important to look for both the signs and symptoms of the insect. If you pull back the bark of an infested tree, you should see those serpentine or S-shaped tunnels just under the bark. If you see a, a white or cream colored larva with the bell shaped sections on the abdomen, then that's a good sign that that's emerald ash borer. The adult beetle chews an exit hole that is uh, shaped like the capital letter D. So it's flat on one side and semicircle on the other side. And it'll be about three to four millimeters across. A symptom of attack of emerald ash borer is the tree's response to the insect. So typically you'll see the uh, top of the tree starting to die first. And then you get epicormic shoots, which are brand new shoots that start to grow from the uh, branches or from the trunk of the tree. Emerald ash borer is an ecological disaster. It is eliminating ash as a major component of our urban and rural forests. Ash is an important timber species. It's used for things like flooring, for furniture, for uh, sporting goods. It's also used for gunnels of canoes and those kinds of things where it's a very flexible but strong wood. Emerald ash borer is a beetle that was introduced from China into North America. We think it arrived in a wooden pallets or wooden crating used to ship uh, industrial materials to North America. It's most likely spreading by people moving infested material like firewood or, or in some cases maybe logs. We think it may also be spreading as a hitchhiker on vehicles where it may be uh, attached to a vehicle like on the RAD. When emerald ash borer is found in a new area, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency imposes a quarantine or regulation on it to stop the movement of infested material from that regulated area. So it's important that if you're going to go camping or going to take firewood to your cottage or to your camp, then uh, you should buy it locally and burn it on site. My name is Martin Streit. I work for the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources. We're standing in an ash-dominated forest that was thinned 10 years ago. The intent of that thinning was to increase the diversity of the species that are growing here today. If a woodlot owner has an ash-dominated forest, thinning is a good idea. Not all forests are ready for thinning, and that's why sometimes getting some advice from someone with experience in forestry is a great idea. If you have the knowledge to do it yourself, that's fine, but there's plenty of people who can give you advice on how to do thinning as well. And in Ontario, we have certified tree markers who can come in and mark your woodlot for you to make sure the job is done right. There are a lot of resources available to private landowners to assist them. For example, the document, Preparing for Emerald Ash Borer, provides detailed guidelines for landowners on how to thin their woodlot. When you're cutting your ash forest, we strongly recommend you don't cut all ash trees. In the first place, cutting too many trees can cause a major change in your forest. It might be prone to flooding or invasive species may come in underneath. But a number of other species should be kept to increase the diversity in the woodlot. Secondly, if the emerald ash borer has not yet arrived, those ash trees are still growing and they may still be valuable 5 to 10 years from now. In most instances, after thinning, other tree species will establish naturally in your forest. Periodically, you may need to consider tree planting. You should contact your local conservation authority or local tree nursery for some advice. We do recommend that you plant native species that are adapted to your forest. After you're thinning your woodlot, you're going to have wood 
that you want to move. If you're within a regulated area for the emerald ash borer, it is illegal to move ash products outside of that regulated area. But bear in mind, the best practice is actually to move the wood as close to your woodlot as possible to prevent spread of the emerald ash borer even within the regulated area. This is the Morrisburg Golf Course. This row of ash trees lines the west fairway of the first tee. So you notice all the trees here are green ash. A landowner who has ash trees has an option to plant new trees underneath now before the emerald ash borer has arrived. These trees will grow under the shade of the ash and will be there to replace those ash trees when they do die. In many places in southern Ontario, ash is one of our most important trees. We have it in our towns, we have it on our golf courses, farmers have it in their fence lines, it's in our forests. And when it is gone, it will affect the aesthetics of our towns, it will affect wildlife habitat, it will affect water quality, it will be a major problem. If you suspect you have the emerald ash borer, you should contact the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. You can also try your local conservation authority or Ministry of Natural Resources office to get help.